Welcome to Food Talk, where we talk about food, farming, fishing, and all things East End. And uh, today my guests are Alex Balsam of Balsam Farms and uh, Jeremy Blutstein of VNE in Montauk. And uh, welcome to Food Talk, guys. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having also, us. Also, Lashana Tova to all our Jewish viewers and to you guys. Uh, we're filming on Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. I feel like I should be a guest on your guys' show because you guys have known each other for so long. You met at the <laughs> Sunday school at the yep. Jewish Center, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do, you have, do you have any dirt on, on Alex? You know, pun intended. I mean, you know, it's not dirt; it's soil. Uh, uh, that's that's a farmer thing, I guess. Uh, uh, no, he's uh, he was the squeaky clean one. I was the uh, I was the I was the bad influence. He was the one who was getting thrown out of Sunday school. Uh, but politely asked to leave would be a better way to. Uh, <laughs> both went to East Hampton High School. Both graduated in '98. Yep. Um, you ended up at Cornell. Yep. Studying uh, enviro engineering, and then you went on to, and 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 also. Um, um, business, <laughs> then you went on to law school at UB, Yep. and you have your law degree. I do, I do, yeah. So you could get daikon or a divorce if you went to Balsam Farms. <laughs> yes, got definitely. I've gotten definitely. both. Yep. <laughs> 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 and uh, Jeremy, I love your Instagram feed, Chef, uh, Chef Blutstein, if you're, uh, if you're following at home. Um, you've got a good feed, and of course I love the Balsam feed. Um, uh, you've been the chef at, at e, e for how long now? Uh, it's just about two years. That's great. It's a great uh, restaurant. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's one of the older ones in Montauk. Um, can't beat the view. It's uh, it's enormous, um, and uh, we've kind of uh, taken what was there and just kind of t uh, turned it up a little bit towards a uh, little bit more focus on the local uh, local farms um, and fishing and whatnot. I uh, noticed that in your, in your feed because that originally was, uh, I'm sure there's still Asian influence, but that was originally a sort of a pan-Asian restaurant. There was, um, and I think that the next evolution for that um, for that restaurant was, was easy. Um, we just took uh, subtle Asian flavors and then kind of worked in um, as much local produce and or um, product as possible, um, and it just, it works. Well, it's a great restaurant. We did the launch for that. We, we, yeah. we launched them, and we launched Harvest. And uh, do you see John and Bruce around? Uh? John and Bruce are, are active, hands-on owners. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Please give them my best. Absolutely. They're good guys. Yeah, they're absolutely. good guys. We did uh, Harvest on, the, on Hudson, too. Um, so uh, you, sir, um, did, you go to, did you go to culinary? Or did you? I did. Yeah. I went to a New York restaurant, uh, which would then became part of the Art Institute of New York. Right. Um, and then you've uh, so you've worked at Italy with uh, uh, Batali. You worked um, at uh, Tremont, um, where you got a nomination for a James Beard House Award. Yep, which is a real honor. We made it to the semifinals for uh, the uh, best new restaurant in the United States. Um, we lost that to Tartulia. Wow. They uh, we'll get them back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, opened up Italy, which was a monster. Uh, mm. That was. Uh, you know, it's a two and a half million dollar a week operation. Wow. Um, it's, it's quite insane. Um, and then after Tremont, um, I came back out east uh, and ran and operated uh, the uh, crow's nest for Sean McPherson. Um, and then obviously uh, about two years ago, I've, I moved over to E&E &E for um, the past uh, two years, which is, which is also nice. Yeah, no, that's yeah. great, that's great. And, and Alex, how, how old is Balsam Farms now? This is our 15th year. Wow. Yeah. It's a great farm stand. Thank you. That's where I get all my corn. I mean, the Thank corn you. is insane. Man. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> just, we do. Just, just saying. We pride ourselves on the, on the corn. Yeah, I was yeah. at a local restaurant on Saturday night, and they, they served the corn. It was Nick and Tony's. They, they served the corn a little bit of shallots. It's like eating candy. It was insane. It's just so good. So Thank you. I appreciate all you bring to the table, at, at literally, at, at Ball. How many, how many different... Vegetables and, and and produce items. Do you guys grow? I mean, it's 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 really countless. I mean, if if you open a, a seed catalog, chances are we grow it. Um, <laughs> and when we grow it, we grow every variety that they have, um, and every color that they have, and every size that the, and shape that they have. Um, so it's uh, you know it's a lot it's a lot for us to get our head around planning wise. After our fifteenth year, we're we're getting a little better at it, right, but right, right. yeah, it's tough. That's good. Good for you. Thanks. And I see that you have the Balsam Farm hat on, which is a direct facial to Jason Weiner, who's always pushing the Amber Waves hat. I, I know. You know, he's he's. You know, he. Do you have anything you want to say to Jason? You know, you are a handsome man, sir. <laughs> um, uh, you know, we. I think all of us um, who are active chefs out here uh, really try to promote um, where we get our uh, product from, um, because we do have such a personal relationship uh, with 
with the farm. Um, you know, it doesn't come in the back of a truck with a logo on it. It comes in the back of a, a pickup covered in dirt with your friend driving it, which right. just makes it that much better for everybody. Um, you know, you know exactly you know where you're getting it from and who you're getting it from, and 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 it, it's a it's a great relationship that you don't necessarily get when cooking in large cities like mm -hmm, New York. Mm -hmm. um, and this hat's just cool, man. I mean, let's just be honest. It's a cool and <laughs> fine-looking hat. Now, does this mean that you're like anti-amber waves? Because no, those girls no, are no. awesome. No, I mean, I mean, had, I, had Kate I, Baldwin on. Yeah, and you know, they <coughs> they do great things. Uh, they do great things in the town that I grew up in, in Amagansett, mm -hmm. which is which is nice. Um, but you know, it's uh, it's my boy right there. So boy, so boy. you know, that's that's what we got to do. <laughs> is there a war between amber, amber waves and balsam? I should ask Actually, you this. Far from it. You know, uh, the, oh, no. the local I agriculture see, community. Yeah. yeah, no, I of course. But uh, no, we are actually we all of all the local farmers take great pride in you know being one, being one, working, helping right. each other out. Um, I guess at some level we're all competition for each other, but honestly, no local farmers see see it that way. Right. Uh, it's really it's really a nice community of local farmers that we have. And for you guys, a little uh, cafe Bustello, which is the uh, official coffee of Food Talk. We probably should have some Hampton coffee, but. The organic crew in North here anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> but uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of this stuff. So, um, do you guys take sugar or are you guys already sweet? Right? I'm sweet. Yeah, that's yeah. what I figured. Um, <clears throat> so, apples and honey. Um, we're gonna do now just um, a little um, stump the guests out of uh, my favorite book, um, The Food Lover's Companion. So the 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 word of the day. Is and that you might get this Nabemino. About thirty thousand feet, right over, yeah. right, right over the old dome. All right, so Nabemino is a Japanese dish. A Jap, it's it refers to a variety of Japanese hot pot dishes, otherwise known as nab, nabe, nabe. No, no, no. Still nothing. No. <laughs> There's a restaurant in Harlem called Nabe, which now I understand why it's called Nabe, or I pr it's pronounced pronounced Nab. So most Nabemino stews are soups served during the colder season. You should put this on the menu. At the end, you could use some of his. Now he's doing menu planning. Look at yeah, this. Look at that. <laughs> be, right? Worse than Jason. So anyway, um, I stumped you guys. I can't believe it. <laughs> Slum Gullion was, was I had uh, uh, Gail Ardell and Paul Del Fabro. I got them on that. Slum Gullion is a, uh, a stew that came out of San Francisco during the gold rush. You got any tractor questions in there? Yeah, that's what I should I have. Mean, what kind of oil does a tractor take? Uh, you know. Standard 1040 or? No, no 15W40. Okay. Yeah. Well, now we know. <laughs> All right, good. Especially Pro Tella tea. When you're riding dirty. Um, <laughs> always am. <laughs> uh, Alex, I, I asked you if you had given any thought to this. Um, five people that you would invite to dinner. Yeah. If you could invite, and in the whole world, dead or alive. It's a fun question. I'll give you boring answers. Good. Um, <laughs> actually, Thomas Jefferson. Or, or some of the founding fathers, I would love to sit down and talk to them about what has happened in our country, you know, um, since their time. And if we have that dinner, my, I'd have to bring my dad. He was a, he's a history teacher. He would, he would love, love that conversation. Um, my grandfather and great-grandfather were, were dairy farmers in Ozone Park, Queens. Oh, cool. Um, so I think neither of them knows about what Balsam Farms is now, but they started the original Balsam Farms, and I think they would like to know um, that the that that it's still alive. Um, my wife, we have two young boys. My wife and I have not had dinner together in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to take my wife out to dinner. Oh, that's sweet. That's a good. That's a good and along answer. the same lines, I'd like to take Jeremy. I'd like to go that's to dinner six. with Jeremy. That's six. That's okay. All right. Well, I'll keep, keep going. Bump one of you. Okay, yeah, yeah. Keep going because it's just, it's just <laughs> we just pulled five out of there. Who else do you want to eat with? Um, <laughs> we could have two parties. You know what? Five. I'm gonna. Go have a redneck good time and go out to dinner with Toby Keith. Oh, it's a curveball. Yeah. What about you, brother? You, you, you give any thought to this? I don't know. He just, you know, stole the thunder. Just, well, speechless is where I'm at right now. <laughs> <coughs> what about this for you? Um, <laughs> some of your your cooking influences. Or was there one man or woman that really influenced you um, as you uh, have, have plied your trade behind the stove? Um, I, you know, I think there's people that you learn from. Um, Throughout your career that you've worked with, that maybe people don't know about, and you know, it's maybe it's that uh, that prep cook that you that you hired. You know, it's it's the little guys that that, that teach you the most. Um, when you're working for uh, 
you know, big name chef or, you know, you're, you're working for someone who's been in the industry for a long time, um, they're classically trained. Uh, what's interesting is finding out the, uh, the guy from Ecuador who's been doing this for 15 years, um, how he cleans a fish or how he breaks down, you know, lamb or whatnot. Um, he's had to do it so many times for so much repetition that he's found a better and faster way than anyone has ever taught you in, in, a, in a textbook or, or in a classic way or whatnot. Um, and it's, it's those guys who, 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 you know, we had a guy who made uh, fresh pasta at Italy. This guy would bury anybody, um, top to bottom, from, from, you know, our executive chef, Alex Pilas, down to, you know, Mike Toscano, the, the chef at Monzo. Um, this guy, you know, he'd bang out pasta for service for 300 every night, and he did it, you know, with more technique and at a faster speed than any of us could ever do it. And those are the guys you learn the most from. Oh, yeah, that's great. Um, you know, it's it's like that with anything else. If 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 you if you're set to do a task of repetition over and over and over again, um, the guys who do it are the ones who are the best at it. It's not the guy who's like standing over them watching them. Um, so there's a lot of unsung heroes, if you if you will, um, in kitchens, and it's usually the the lowest paid or the you know lowest man or woman on the totem pole that that really um, do the, the 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 brunt of all the work. Uh, you know, the, the New York Times had an article, you know, years ago about who's cooking your dinner. And, you know, there's this, this uh, manifestation of, you know, guys in clean-shaven white coats with a toque on cooking your dinner. <laughs> and the reality is, you know, it's like two Jamaican guys, you know, you know, you know two Ecuadorians, a Mexican guy, you know, like all these guys from different ethnicities who, who like, they don't fit the stereotype that people have preconceived in their head, but they do it better than anybody. Um, and, you know, that's who you learn from. Um, and that's, you know, no matter where you are, you try to absorb um, little pieces of, of everybody and kind of add it to your arsenal. Uh, that's a, I, I love that. That's a really good answer. It's the truth. Yeah. Right? I mean, who's, who's really cooking your dinner? Um, you have brought some fish for us. Yes. You're going to prepare a, a whole fish for us. We're going to do a whole fish. Um, at E&E, &E, we, uh, we have it on the menu. Um, it is uh, a whole fish preparation. We change the whole fish, uh, you know, depending on what, what's coming in. Um, all summer long, for the most part, we were running uh, what we like to call pants off fluke. Uh, so it was a whole fluke, and we actually just took the top skin off of it and pan roasted it. Um, mm. Today I've got some beautiful black bass, uh, one of my favorite fish out here. Um, everybody's a, a, big, a big striper fan. Um, I think that kind of coincides with Billy Joel and whatever else everybody has preconceived out here, right. what, where, where the best stuff is. But um, black bass is a beautiful, delicate, uh, um, sweet, uh, mild, white-fleshed fish. Uh, we're going to roast that whole. Do a little picked herb salad with some uh, yellow uh, oyster mushrooms, some fennel from uh, my man's farm over here, and uh, the last of the sun golds um, before, mm. uh, before that. It's a sad time of year. Yeah, the tomatoes yeah. and the corn go bye bye. Yep. Um, we've had a pretty good run, man. I mean, yep. it's October, so yep. um, you know the we try to use as much as we can, and then you know in the last few weeks it's been pickling and fermenting and canning and mm. all of that fun stuff. So yeah, that we you can. Were doing, did, it, did you post some on Instagram? Some some pickling yet? Um, yeah. yeah, no, we do we do we do a lot. Um, we're we cure, we're curing legs of lamb for prosciutto down in the basement. Um, we've got kimchi that's been doing all sorts of weird things and smelling, uh, <laughs> scaring my prep cooks because they don't really understand what it is, but it's uh, it's it's doing its thing. Uh, pickling tomatoes, grapes, um, yum, um, all that good stuff, uh, so that we can use it throughout the throughout the, the season. I love it. Um, but yeah, just doing a nice like kind of fresh picked herb salad with some fennel. Um, on top of a whole fish, just you know, keep it simple, stupid kind of stuff. I love it. Let's switch seats. You're gonna get that fish going. Sure. And um, Alex, when is the um, the stand gonna close? We're, we go th uh, we go eight days a week until Thanksgiving. Oh, good. Yeah. Yep. Good to know. Yeah. You know, if it's uh, the selection will unfortunately decrease a little bit every week, but right. no, we represent well right to the holiday. And uh, when's the last of the corn? Are we? I think we're inside of two weeks. Okay. Yeah, we've got two plantings ahead of us now, so uh, we, can, we can milk this for another couple of weeks. Nice. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Good. yeah. Hoping to get some mid- I was, at a, I was at a friend's house in Amagansett, and uh, I was starving, and he threw me an ear of, of your corn, and I ate it raw. Yeah. Oh, I would do that again. It was so good. I eat a lot of raw corn. Um, yeah, why not? Sometimes out of necessity, because you're just hungry, right. and you're in the field. 
there's some corn. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> it's, a, it's a good way to, you know, you got to sample the product. You got to know how it's how right. it's picking. Right. And uh, so you pop an ear just to, you know, just keep well, it, keep a tail on things. we got two more weeks. That's good to know. Yeah. So look at this beautiful fish. So we've got our big black bass. Um, <coughs> Simply done, take some scissors. Um, our front desk girls hate us because we always steal theirs. Because <laughs> uh, they always go missing in the kitchen for some reason. We cut the spines right off, take off the fin. Getting a spine from one of these fish in your finger is no fun, mm -hmm. um, as there's bacteria and they're sharp and they uh, definitely swell up and uh, it's a real infection. It's not, it's not a good day. Not a good day for anybody. So we're going to just go ahead and take this off. I'm trying not to splash you with that. No, uh, I just got some fish in my yeah. eye, but don't worry happy, about it. Happy New Year. <laughs> don't, drink, don't drink that coffee either. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's good for you. Um, real simple. Just going to get a couple scores with a sharp knife across the flesh just to allow the seasoning, the heat, and even cooking on both sides. And then we'll just give it a little sprinkle of salt. This happens to be Montauk sea salt, fresh from the underpants of someone at Dish Plains, <laughs> which is delicious. And then this just goes into a hot pan like that. And we'll just let that do its thing and transfer it to an oven. And while that's cooking, we'll make the salad. And what what do you uh, what have you brought for your salad today? Uh, we have a little chervil. This is from Amber Waves. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Oh my god. Pick it up. I don't hate on Amber Waves. That's that's. No, I listen. I'm a fan of Amber Waves. If, yeah, if they were I, in those my, girls in my, are good looking. No, all, Every one of Kate them. Kate is is unbelievable. Jesus. No, I know, I know. And that pizza oven. I mean, I take it back. I'm a, I'm a fan. I yeah. just don't get them. I'm a fan too. Now I'm kind of scared. No, don't. <laughs> I'm scared. You think they're watching? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> far more from me, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Everything was fine until that one food talk episode. God. <coughs> um, yeah, so we have a little bit of chervil, which has a nice, like, subtle anise flavor to it. Um, I feel like it's one of those herbs that kind of get passed over and nobody really uses, but mm. they should. Um, we have some Italian flat leaf parsley. Um, I like to do picked herb salads uh, with just about every protein um, or by themselves. Uh, you know, they can be used as, as a green, as a salad green, um, and they're kind of passed over in that respect, um, and they shouldn't be. You know, they all have different flavors, parsley being bitter. Um, the oregano is a little bit on the spicy side, mm. um, which by itself is kind of like overpowering, but when it gets to play with its friends in a bowl, then it's not. Um, and we have some tarragon as well with uh, anise flavor, which is, uh, Kind of goes really lovely and classically with whole fish. Mm. Um, we have fennel tops from uh, Bruce's Garden um, up at Harvest on Hudson. Oh, yes. Um, so we're drying those right now for the pollen. You guys should do that. <laughs> now I'm telling you what to do. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got time for that. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Look, man, if you dried fennel pollen, it'd be. Each, a, it'd, each, it'd be a lot more productive than watching our Jets lose every week. Mm. Oh, the Jets. That's awful. Oh, my no. God. No. Ugh. I mean, they played a little bit better than the... Uh, than a Division than three, three high school game team? against... Uh, who was that? KC. That? Oh, God, that was a horrible game. It's like they're playing a different sport. Yeah. The little... Let's talk about the Jets. No, no. No. It was a stay right here. Yeah, no, <laughs> let's, let's not do that. We don't want to get depressed. We were told not to curse on the show, right? <laughs> and I think that might happen if right. indeed we do. Uh, Have we cursed, cursed yet? No, we haven't. I don't think almost. so. Yeah. Almost in my head a lot. Uh, a lot. Yeah. But um, these are the oysters. Yeah. These are some beautiful yellow oy oyster mushrooms. Um, we're gonna do these just raw, which uh, 
a little bit different, I'd say. Um, as I'm making a huge mess on the world's smallest cutting board. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, the Sun Golds from uh, Balsam. Uh, <laughs> Good stuff right there. Yeah, they don't get much better than this. I mean, I feel like everybody at some point um, puts Sun Golds on their stand and then kind of gets to taste one of these and then goes home and cries and takes them off their stand because these are uh, about as good as they come. Get your hand out of it. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. And it's October. You know, it's, you would think at this point uh, we would be, I don't know, done with nails, but we haven't gotten a storm of any sort of proportion, right? Yeah, it was kind of a late spring too, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It, uh, it started out nice, and uh, the, you know, the farmers, we all, got, we all got a jump start on the season, but um, Mother Nature took it back for about a month. We had, we had, a, we had a cold, cold late spring. So put a, some of these fennel fronds in there as well. Those little feathers. Yeah. It's nice and easy. I feel like we're on a Bob Ross. There we go. <laughs> Happy little trees. Happy fennel. Happy fennel. Let's take the eight-inch brush and put a, one right down the middle, though, at yeah. the end of the show. If we have thirty seconds left, absolutely. You know, I really should just like murder my finger right now. That'd be good. But, you know, live TV. Live TV. A little blood. Blood. Give a little color to the salad. Yeah, you know, tells you what we can. All right. Have my Jack's coffee making my hands. <laughs> Jump. Um. And then this is really simple. It's just some fresh lemon juice, which you give a nice little squeeze. Some more uh, Montauk sea salt. Do you happen to know which uh, fisherman caught the fish? Um, typically, these come in. Um, we get them from the Anna Mary, uh, which is um, little Anthony and uh, Donnie Lode's boat in um, Montauk. They actually uh, they trap for them. Mm. Um, they're a lobster, commercial lobster, um, and uh, Jonah crab boat. Uh, you might know Johnny Lode from his uh, famous floating out to sea a couple years ago. Oh. Uh, On his way to Block Island, that guy. Uh, they were out fishing, and right. uh, and he had he had the unfortunate experience of of falling off the boat and w watching his own boat kind of sail away. Right. Um, but you know, miraculously. What a tale! I remember that. You know, How long was he in the water for? 12 hours, 15, 16 hours. Oh, Lord. Help. Long enough for the bluefish to nibble at his toes. <laughs> I think everything was nibbling at his toes oh, at man. that point. Um, but, you know, he's uh, alive and well. and um, Back on the water. Back on the water, which, you know, fall off that horse. Um, so this just gets a little light toss. Alex, who, who's the most influential person in your life? Yeah. Um, Besides Jeremy, who's yeah. clearly uh, somebody you look up to. And look. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, your, 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 your face just brightened up when, when, when you walked in here and saw him. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, I have a great, great love for Jeremy. Um, in terms of influence, though, you know, I'd have to, I'd have to give credit to farmers as a whole. Um, farmer, farmers have really taught me how to think, how to work, um, how, to, how to stay grounded. And how to have a good time. Mm. Um, it's it's uh, they've 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 taught me a lot about life, a lot of great things about life. I gotta start hanging around you guys more often. Yeah, I, I mean we were some new lessons. We'd be kids, and you know, my mom would drop me off at his house to go, you know, toss around a baseball, and I'd have to run out in the field because he was sitting inside a cab of guys planting potatoes and corn. You know, it's like where's Alex? He's over there at the end of the field. We were like six, you know, eight, whatever. How old? No surprise, he ended up yeah. starting a farm. I mean, forever. He's, you know, this is, this is, this is something that, the day I met him, he's as passionate as as today. Wow. With farming. That's I mean, cool. Just, I love that. It's. Uh, we have a running joke with our out of town friends. Who, you know, they want to come visit us in the summer. Oh, you guys are in the Hamptons. We're coming out for the weekend. Um, we go. We joke. Oh yeah, we'll take you fishing. And because sure enough, you know, well, we'll take you fishing after we go 
pick 100 bags of corn, you know. <laughs> He's not kidding. No one, ever, no one ever goes fishing, right. you know, when they come to visit oh, us. They do, they do work labor. a full yeah, day, though. They should. <laughs> As they should. Well, we've got a couple minutes left, so we're going to... Uh, oh, look at this beautiful fishy. Take out our... Hello, baby. Our whole fish. Yum. Which is, uh, you know, pretty on its own. Let's transfer that bad boy right there. Get rid of this. Hopefully not set the television studio on fire. And then this just gets its garnish. Just be your waiter. A little olive oil. Just finish that with a little bit of salt. And that's local Montauk bass. With a, oh, look at that. That's a beautiful. With a uh, balsam farm picked if, herb if, salad. If we were allowed to have our phones on camera, we could just snap that right now. Can we get an overhead <laughs> shot of that? Because that is just a, just a beautiful fish. Maybe if we put it over here. It's not ugly. That's just beautiful. Um, well, <clears throat> I almost don't want to look at that. Mm. Hi, baby. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, the easiest, thank you. The, yeah, the, I mean, the easiest way to kind of do this is, uh, you know, you get down there into the flesh and it just kind of lifts mm. right off the bone. And you scoop yourself a little uh, salad. Well, that's good eating. Oh. Oh, that salad was perfectly dressed, too. Boy, this fish is good. Mm. Oh, those yellow goats are so sweet. Thank you. Wow. Thanks. That's all we have time for today. Um, I'm glad we got to, to have a chance for, to try this fish. Um, Alex, I want to thank you for thank coming you, down. Really good to see you. Jeremy. Pleasure. Bless you, man. You guys got a good thing going out there in Montauk. I got to get out there. And to our viewers, coge lo suave, pero cogelo. Until next time, food talk. Thanks. Um. <clears throat>